And to go on to the fight card, this, uh, the main event will be broadcast on Showtime Television. It'll be 10 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. It'll be tape delayed on the West Coast. We'll also have an undercard on Showtime Extreme, which will be amazing. We have some great fights on the undercard. And that will begin at 8 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Pacific. Doors open at 4 p.m. local time uh, with our first bout beginning at uh, 5 p.m. At this point, I'd like to uh, go ahead and introduce the fighters. And uh, to my far right, with a uh, record of 15 and three in mixed martial arts, one of the most amazing jiu-jitsu practitioners. I've seen him fight in Japan, got to fight all over the world uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi. One of the greatest grapplers in the history of mixed martial arts with a record of 15 and three from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, out of X Gym, Mr. Jacare Souza. And his opponent to my far left, with a record of nine and one in mixed martial arts, trains with Greg Jackson out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Mr. Derek Brunson. And now we're gonna introduce our main event, uh, five rounds on the Bantamweight title. To my immediate left, with a record of 15 and one, our former champion in strike force mixed martial arts out of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, Ms. Sarah Kaufman. And she'll be fighting out of Venice, California, with a record of five and zero in mixed martial arts, with an amazing history of fighting in judo and two-time Olympian, Miss Ronda, wait, Miss Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Um, well, I always fight the same regardless of the situation. You know, I've I've had fights that I arrived the day before, you know, having to cut weight. I've had, I had fights where I had pit bull bites up my foot. I had fights where, you know, against my best friends and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. I um, I respect Sarah a lot as an opponent, and I trained harder for this fight than any other fight before. And um, she might not know it, but she should be thanking her lucky stars that you know that uh, MMA is properly regulated in California, because. I'm, I respect her so much that I'm not taking any chances. If I get her in an armbar, I'm gonna try and rip it off and throw it at her opponent, I'd throw it at her, her corner. And if I get her in a choke, I'm gonna hold on to it until she's actually dead. And if I get her in a knockout, I'm not gonna walk away from it. I'm gonna try and actually pound her face into the ground and she's depending on the confidence of the California Athletic Commission to be able to walk out of that cage alive. And that has nothing to do with whether I like her or respect her. She seems like a nice chick but every single time I go into fight, I pretend as if it's my little sister's life depending on it, and in that kind of situation, nobody could ever beat me. That's great, it's a fight, uh, and that's what you wanna do. You don't wanna come in and, and play patty cake. That's not what we're here for. We're here to show up and do everything we possibly can to win. I mean, hopefully no one dies in the process, but again, it's a fight and anything can happen, so it, it's, it's great. I mean, it, it gets people excited, and people want to see two, two athletes showing up and fighting um, and not just trying to outscore the other person. They want to see someone decisively finish a fight. Uh, for both Derek and Jacare, I just want to get your take, uh, both of you, on Luke Rockhold has been so vocal about wanting uh, bigger challenges, wanting to go outside uh, Strike Force for challenges. As two of the top contenders uh, in the Strike Force middleweight division, wh what's your take on that? And uh, what do you say to people that say the division isn't very deep? Um, I think we have a um, really good division at, in middleweight and strike force. I think it's one of the best divisions right now in strike force. Uh, we got a lot of tough guys here, so I plan to put a halt on those plans from Luke Rocco. Falando besteira, ele. É, o, o strike force está aí para provar que tem vários atletas bons na divisão. É, a prova disso foi a luta que ele fez comigo e foi uma luta muito contestada. E ele está devendo essa luta para os fãs. E eu estou esperando ele aqui no strike force. The proof is there. The last, the last fight he held for me was pretty close, and he feel like he got to go again. So right there is a proof that there's a lot of good fight in strike force to hand. And, uh, you know, looking forward to have a chance and, you know, pay back and get my belt back if that happened. Sure. Uh, well, up until this point, um, you know, strike force and Showtime have always had, uh, for the last four years, I think, that I've fought for them, have really been trying to push the females. And the partnership with Zufa um, has enforced that even more, um, bringing in, you know, you know, more to the table really in terms of 
Um, you know, Rhonda has clearly made a, a huge dent in the scene, and her popularity has for sure helped all the women out there. And, you know, uh, Chris Cyborg and Gina Carano, they were a main event for their fight. And then after that, you know, a lot of them were co-main events for the title fights. So the fact that the Misha Tate and Ronda Rousey fight was able to be promoted and pushed and, and made the main event has led to, you know, me being able to fight in the main event as well, uh, along with Ronda Rousey. And it, it's just, it's a really positive thing. You see so many fans that are behind the females in the sport and that they're excited for these fights. Uh, and, and again, Showtime and Strikeforce having three female fights on this one card is just another kind of stepping stone to help the, the fan base grow as well as the talent base. Um, I think Sarah put it really well. Uh, I think uh, one of the most encouraging changes that I've seen is I see a lot more uh, respect within the sport, uh, a lot of it from the men. And I, uh, I, I appreciate that a lot and that uh, it really is encouraging to know that um, you know, the, the guys in the sport aren't just a bunch of, you know, like bullheaded hicks that they found in bars, you know, that, that it's kind of like the image that was projected early on, you know, these are very intelligent and respectful athletes, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that the women are starting to be, you know, ex accepted by, um, you know, our, pretty much our, our, our co-workers is the way I like to think of it. But um, I, I, I just, uh, it's, that's the most encouraging part of it, to see the, the acceptance from the inside as well as from the, the fans on the outside. Does part of you want to end this fight by something other than an arm bar just to get future opponents thinking about something else from you? That's one theory. You want to expand on that at all? Nope. All right. Well, I mean, we have uh, three female fights on this fight card. We're going to take a look at it, you know, uh, those undercard fights you know, as they happen or afterwards. But um, you know what? Ronda's going to have her hands full. Sarah's going to have her hands full. I look forward to seeing a great fight, and uh, we'll take it from there. You know, I train harder than I would for any other fight because the fight in front of you is the most important fight that's happening at the time. And I feel really confident going to this fight, and I'm confident that Ronda's going to bring it. She's going to come. She's going to show up to fight. She's going to try and kill me, which is kind of mean, but that's all right. Um, but at the end of the day, someone's going to walk out with the belt, and I want that person to be me. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've done all my press before this, and I feel like I did all the work that I needed to, and I'm here to fight. I'm not here to, you know, do a little dance for you guys. So um, I don't know what else you would actually expect from me.